Artificial general intelligence is definitely on its way, aka AGI. Not too long ago, we witnessed Auto GPT. So this essentially is GPT-4 or GPT-3.5, depending on which version you want to use, running entirely autonomously, trying to accomplish tasks using methods like searching the internet for information, creating different files, developing different plans around a basic goal. And it was a really fun video, but the one thing about Auto GPT is that you needed to do somewhat of a complex installation process to get it running. Since Auto GPT GPT is just on GitHub though, there are two different free ways you can use this thing online, and we're going to be discussing those today. For those who aren't acquainted though, I want to do a brief recap on Auto GPT. I gotta say guys, it's pretty funny we're already seeing some news stories about this. If you thought Chat GPT was a bit scary, wait till you hear about Auto GPT. To be honest, after using Auto GPT, I was uh, a little bit scared. And by the way, it is not this Chrome plugin, we're looking for this GitHub right here. So, AutoGPT is an experimental open source application showcasing the capabilities, the true capabilities of GPT-4. Like I said though, it also works with GPT-3.5 if you don't have access to the GPT-4 API through OpenAI yet. So using the GPT language model, it autonomously develops and manages businesses to increase net worth, but it can do more than just manage businesses. As I briefly went over earlier, it's got internet access for searches and information gathering. It has a long-term and short-term memory management. It can actually create multiple instances of GPT-4 for just text generation. So these little extra AI agents, they can just write information. They're not allowed to search the internet just yet. It's interesting though, because the main auto GPT mothership, we could call it, always tries to make those little GPT-4 agents search the web when they don't have access to do that. It's also got access to popular websites and platforms, and it's got file storage and summarization using GPT-3.5. So again, to run it on your own machine, you gotta do all this stuff. And that's what I did in that previous video. There's a whole installation set up, but you can actually just use it in your browser. You can also use this thing called the Pinecone API, which allows it to store vast amounts of memory, which I would recommend doing because you can actually do it for completely free. But like I said, if you don't have access to GPT-4, you can use GPT 3.5 only mode. So here is our first method of using Agent GPT online. Again, we don't have to set anything up. Now, previously, when I first tested this thing out, you didn't have to implement your own API key to get this thing to work. However, if you go to the settings here, it says, welcome to Agent GPT. We're receiving high traffic. And because of this, we momentarily ask that users utilize their own OpenAI API key for Agent GPT. Before, it was essentially just free and they were using their own key. Well, apparently you are able to use it for completely free, but you just won't be able to execute for very, very long with your agent. So of course, I'm going to go ahead here and just put my own API key in. OpenAI does charge you for this, but it's not very much at all. I think an hour of testing cost me like 50 cents or something like that. So it's really not that bad. So yes, viewers, on the OpenAI website, this is where you will see your API keys. To get API access to GPT-4, you do have to sign up. I will link it down below. But you should be able to get GPT-3.5 API access right off the bat. So as you can see, April 11th, I created a new secret key. You guys won't be able to see the key here because then you'd be able to just run GPT-4. But once I've created and copied a new secret key, I'll go back into my agent GPT and just paste the key and then I'll click the save button. As you can see, there is some really interesting things to note about the Agent GPT interface. Up here in the top left-hand corner, you can see there's a new agent button. You just click this whenever you want to clear and create a new agent. It does say, though, in the future, this will be a list of your deployed agents, very, very similar to the chat GPT interface. Just very, very interesting. It makes me wonder, honestly, if OpenAI is going to develop a very similar baby AGI interface for ChatGPT. So it's very simple instructions. Create an agent by adding a name slash goal and hit deploy. So for my first agent, I'm going to name it Candy GPT, and it's going to try to figure out how to buy M&Ms. We'll see how this goes. Obviously, this thing doesn't have access to money, so I don't think it's going to be able to purchase M&Ms. Oh, okay. It's creating tasks here. So I have stopped the agent by pressing the agent button so we can read through this. As you can see, it thinks and then it goes added task one, identify the nearest store that sells M&Ms. 
Task 2, determine the current price and availability of M&Ms at the identified store. Task 3, initiate the purchase of M&Ms through an online or in-store transaction. And then it tries to execute that first task. And it says the nearest store that sells M&Ms is not specified. Please provide a location or address to the nearest M&Ms. So based off of the result of executing the first task here, now it's able to figure out, oh, I don't have a specific store to find M&Ms at. I need to use a search engine or map application to find the nearest store that sells M&Ms if the location or address is not provided. What I want to see if I repress this deploy agent button, is it going to pick up where it left off? Oh, okay. It is sort of doing that. Okay, yeah, yeah. So it kind of restarts the whole task here. But we can just essentially let this thing run in the background for as long as we want and find out what the result of this agent is going to be. So it's trying to find discounts now on M&Ms, which is interesting. It found some prices per packet for M&Ms. It's trying to create a shopping list and budget plan to ensure successful purchase of M&Ms at the moment. Oh, okay. So it's finding the different kinds of M&Ms here. Plain M&Ms, peanut M&Ms, crispy M&Ms. Now that we have a shopping list, we must create a budget plan to ensure successful purchase. So yeah, this thing will just run continuously essentially, but you can always scroll back up and read anything because it does move pretty quickly. It thinks faster than a human, that's for sure. Calculate the total cost of the M&Ms you want to buy. If the total cost exceeds your budget, consider adjusting the quantity or type of M&Ms. So it's creating different shopping lists here. This one is not nine dollars and 84 cents it really wants to get a discount on these m&ms and it comes up with different costs every time total cost of 17 dollars for m&ms oftentimes what happens with auto gpt is it gets in these recursive loops where it's just check for any other stores and discounts on m&ms and it just is going to do this forever oh it actually it managed to complete this task. As you can see, it's tried to deploy one of these additional GPT-4 agents, and it always says, I'm sorry, but as an AI language model, I can't access real-time deals or discounts for M&Ms. It'd be really nice if those additional GPT-4 agents actually could search the internet, because this seems to be a huge roadblock for AutoGPT at the moment. All right, I think this one has gone on long enough. Obviously, the M&Ms is a very silly task, and you can do much more advanced tasks with auto gpt but i want to move on and show you guys the next way you can use this thing online so this one is a very familiar face this is hugging face so dory11111 here made a hugging face space known as baby agi streamlet and it's a very, very simple setup here. Essentially, you just paste your OpenAI key in here and you say your ultimate goal here, the main task at hand, where to start with that task, and then the maximum number of iterations that can happen. So this one is a little bit different because you can input where it should begin. So we'll say start by searching for campsites in the United States. And we'll just click the run button right here. And as you can see, we've got our baby AGI's beginning over here. So what's pretty cool about this, though, is we do have three different iterations of this baby AGI running. It develops this massive task list here that we can read through Canada. It's got Europe in here, United States. Eventually, it wants to end up comparing the best camping locations from the US, Canada and Europe. And for some reason, this one has stopped producing tasks here. It does say task ending at the end here, but I think some error must have occurred with this. So yeah, it does seem like there has been some sort of issue with this one and it kind of crashed. I do prefer the Agent GPT website over this Hugging Face space, but I figured I would at least mention it, especially because it does have this max iterations feature built in. So moving back to Agent GPT, there is a feature here where you can actually save your entire tasks and the whole agent conversation. You just click the save button right here and what it does is it actually creates a photo and as you can see the photo is extremely long. So you could go ahead and zoom all the way in here and you guys can see after zooming all the way in here <laughs> everything is recorded and saved. It's just in one ginormous photo. Just for testing purposes, because I'm sure a lot of you guys don't have OpenAI API keys, let's see how it does without putting a key in at all, and we'll see how long it executes. All right, so this one is going to be car price searching AI, and it's going to find the cheapest running Toyota Corolla in the US. Oh, it just gave us a straight up error retrieving initial tasks array. So yeah, we didn't put a key in. It seems like they have shut down the free access entirely at the moment, contrary to what this says. Oh, no worries. We'll just deploy the agent with my key. 
Scrape data from online car buying websites to find Toyota Corollas currently listed for sale. Filter the list of Corollas to include only those which are currently running. Sort the filtered list by price and return the entry with the lowest price. Very simple. Wow, it's already starting to find these Toyota Corollas. So we started here at $3,500 for one from Miami, Florida. We're down to $1,500 now in Houston, Texas. Wow, please note that this information is based on the data that is available to me at this time and is subject to change. This is a pretty simple task, so we'll see if it can actually complete this one. So again, it seems like it's tried to deploy a separate agent here, and now the AI responds that it's against OpenAI's use case policy to scrape and collect data from websites. And then the main task operator says, ensure that the task is conducted in a legal and ethical manner. It's trying to get around OpenAI's own policy. Identify any potential legal and ethical concerns that may arise during the data scraping process and address them accordingly. And then it's reapplying the task now with this additional information. And it's able to begin scraping again, apparently. So now we're down to $3,200. Interesting here, it says, after searching through the scrape data, I have found that the cheapest running Toyota Corolla is currently being sold for $1,995. Are we sure that's not just the year of the car? Now it's adding additional tasks like the condition of the car, make sure that nothing affects performance or safety. Oh, now it's being open to considering other models from competitors to ensure that the Toyota Corolla is actually the cheapest option. So it's still going through all of this data, apparently, that it just keeps running and keeps running. And it really does take its own liberties here. Consider additional factories that might affect the total cost of purchasing and owning a Toyota Corolla, such as location, maintenance, history, and insurance rates. I must consider additional factors that may affect the cost of purchasing and owning the car. What's very interesting is it goes ahead and adds the task of contacting the seller of the cheapest running Toyota Corolla to verify its maintenance history and inquire about any necessary repairs or upgrades. Obtain information on the location of the vehicle and transportation costs associated with purchasing it. Apparently, it has stopped itself, which means maybe it completed its task. Cost of taxes, registration fees, any other expenses associated with purchasing and owning a vehicle in the state and where the Toyota Corolla is located. Added task, consider conducting a test drive or requesting additional information from the seller to further verify the car's condition and performance. Financing and payment options for purchasing the Toyota Corolla to ensure that the buyer is able to secure the most affordable and feasible option. It goes very, very deep and very hard at any task you tell it to do. So this is interesting. We get this message here. I thought I was putting my own API key in, but it says because of this demo, we cannot have our agents running for too long. Note that if you desire longer runs, please provide your own API key and settings shutting down. So never ever got to the actual finding of the cheapest Corolla necessarily because it wanted to go further and find out maintenance costs and all this other possible stuff. So it takes the task uh, very, very detailed. But I'm not sure if this was even running on my own API key at this point because it did give us this message here. If this is what you get for completely free, I got to say this is definitely a very, very long and robust test that they give you for completely free on this website. Let me know about in the comments if you guys are able to run this for completely free. So they've also got their own small little Discord server in here for this Agent GPT website. It's only about 500 people. So if you guys are interested in diving into this a little bit deeper, then I would suggest hitting this up, especially if you have any issues using the website. What's interesting here is that Agent GPT, based off of their GitHub here, is another open source project. I believe that this one is based off of AutoGPT, or maybe it's the other way around and AutoGPT is based off of this one. Either way, viewers, I got to say this tech is incredibly exciting and scary at the same time. This really is the first baby steps of AGI. That's why I wanted to do a whole extra video talking about this. Having this kind of thing completely online for users to try out is a lot more accessible to the average everyday person. And now I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of comments and a lot of people in the Discord talking about the different things that they're able to try out and do using these agent GPTs or AGI autonomous GPT models. It really leaves you to wonder about how things are going to be different in the future with AI being able to have all of this capability 
There's a lot of talk about people being worried that jobs are going to be completely overrun in the future with AI and no one's actually going to be able to work for themselves in the future. And that's a very scary thing to think about. So who really knows what's going to happen at the end of the day in the future with AI, but we do know it's very powerful and things like Agent GBT is a spark of the future here. The next step past ChatGPT, AI that's connected to the internet, runs autonomously, reprograms itself, sets new goals. I mean, once we have good AI that, that can do stuff like that, what, what's the end game here? It's going to be able to do nearly anything when you really think about it. As long as the information is on the internet, it is going to be able to manipulate and create and make new decisions based off of that information. I don't know, viewers, tell me what you guys think down in the comments. Let's have a discussion about all this. If you want to see more from the Matvid Pro community, I suggest you check out the Discord server because it's a really great place. Lots of free AI tools, all the latest AI news is on there, and just a lot of really great people in general. Thank you so much for watching, viewers, and I will see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.